Hi there everyone, Ranger Elizabeth here. So because we can't go on a normal hike like we normally would, we are going to come to you virtually. So today we're going to learn all about the topic of earth materials and then we're going to head out for a hike on one of our trails in the parklands to take these ideas that we learn now and to apply them in real life on an actual trail. So as I said, our topic is earth materials. And as we talk, fill in those worksheets that we provided you because we're gonna go over all of those questions in this video. So the first thing I want you to do is to take a couple of seconds just to answer the question, what is the earth made out of? So it takes about 10 seconds now and go ahead and do that. All right, so what are some of those ideas that you wrote down? Some of you all might have written, let's see. Rocks. Water. Mm, let's see, well, if we go out on a hike, we might see some nature, so living things. What else? Air or Oxygen. Uh, let's see, if we have nature, such as plants, uh, we know that plants need to live in dirt or soil. Okay, so you could have had more things than just this, but all of the things we're gonna talk about today are already on this board. So the four earth materials that we're gonna talk about today are rocks, water, air, and soil. So the next thing we're gonna go over is how the earth changes. So think a little bit. The earth right now, does it look the exact same that it was 100 years ago? What about a million years ago? Does the earth look exactly right now as it was when it was formed? The answer to those questions is no. Every single day, the earth changes. So we're gonna go over three processes by which the earth changes. And these all occur with those four earth materials, rock, soil, air, and water. Okay, so our first earth process that we're gonna go over is called weathering. So let's use this picture here, the picture on your worksheet. And what does that picture tell you weathering probably is? So I see here a stick that has been broken into two. So I know that weathering means to break something. Okay, so for example, rocks all started as one big giant rock and over time just broke into smaller and smaller pieces. Okay, so think of something maybe like a landslide or you know, you might have seen videos of cliffs where big rocks fall off. Okay, so those are examples of weathering. And air and water can both cause weathering. So think about a really windy day when you might see trees breaking. Uh, think about a flood that might break up some soil or that might break up rocks or trees, okay? So weathering is our first process. Our second process is erosion. So erosion, as you can see from our picture, it's the movement of something. So we'll write that underneath. Okay, so erosion means to move something from one place to another. And again, air and water can cause erosion. So let's think about if you have a huge rainstorm and you have a creek that floods, that water is moving downstream and as it moves really fast it'll pick up soil and rocks from the sides of the bank and carry them down river. So that's an example of erosion. Okay and our last one is deposition. So this is a word that might be new to you. Okay so deposition as you can see from our picture here means to like bring something down or in this case of earth materials it means 
to fall or to settle somewhere. Or as I like to say, to drop. So deposition occurs when water that was originally carrying like soil or rocks or plants or really anything that that water picked up, it starts to slow down. And when water slows down, it's not as strong. And think about it, if you lose strength, you can't carry heavy things anymore, so you'll probably drop it. So deposition happens when water or air slows down and all of the sediments that it was carrying drop to the bottom. In this case, and what we'll see on our hike, is that our creek slowed down and it dropped rocks and fossils and soil and sand in a certain area, and we call that a gravel bar. Okay, so to review, weathering is when air or water breaks something. Erosion is when air or water moves something. And deposition is when air or water drops something. Okay, so we're gonna take all of these concepts and we're gonna head out for a hike and we're going to take what we learned and look for examples of it in real life at the parklands. Okay, so I'm gonna lace up my boots and we're gonna head on out on our hike. Okay, so now we are gonna head out on our hike, and today we're taking our hike on the Sycamore Trail. So while we're hiking on the Sycamore Trail, we're gonna talk all about earth materials, and we're gonna look for evidence of those three earth processes, weathering, erosion, and deposition. Let's get started. All right, so immediately after I start my hike, I notice this here. So this is a small channel, and we can see that it still has some water inside of it. So water is one of those um, earth materials. But we notice that it looks like the dirt along the sides is falling in. So what happens when we have a big rainstorm is that all of the extra water from this area around me flows to the lowest point, which is here, and it has started to cut through the ground. So that water is picking up this soil on the sides and moving it from here down to our main creek down here. So what earth process is it when water is picking up soil in these rocks here and moving it from one place to another? All right, that process can be called erosion. So this is a great example of erosion. And I will do wanna point out that it recently, this area was a cleared around here. But you can see now that all the trees and plants in this area have been cut down. And when you cut down trees and you take out plants, you are removing some really important roots from the soil. And we're gonna talk about that in just a second on why roots are so important. All right, so you can see we're crossing now that small little channel heading down to our creek. And we're gonna walk over to this outlook over here. So there's our creek. This is Floyd's Fort Creek. Flows through all of our parks. Uh, but I came over here because I want to point out roots. So sycamore trees, which is this tree right here, we know because it turns white at the top, have these giant roots on them. And you can see that they are clinging to the ground. So tree roots are extremely important for holding soil together. So if you remember back here, I told you that we lost all of the trees and roots in this area. So when you have less roots, you'll have more erosion because that soil has nothing to hold on to. And when the water sweeps it away, it's not gonna cling to the tree. It's just gonna keep going with the water. So these trees, these sycamore trees, and you can even see one across the creek over that way, are really important because they hold soil where it is. So even though water can cause a lot of erosion, trees help slow down erosion to keep this area, which is called a riparian area, healthy and helps the creek stay where it is instead of getting wider over time. So when we're walking along a creek with all the water, it's easy to forget that we have another earth material that can be particularly destructive. So um, air or wind 
um, is a very destructive force just like water is so obviously we need air to survive but when it gets really windy it can cause just as much erosion and weathering as water can so I'm taking this video here because you can see these massive trees have fallen over and so these trees have broken okay so if you remember the earth process the process of breaking that's called weathering so these trees have been weathered and they've probably been weathered by two things. Obviously, we're next to a creek, which is just flowing out there. So they might have been broken by the water. But if you've ever seen a thunderstorm before or maybe a windstorm, you know that wind can also cause things to break. So many of these trees around here have also been broken by extreme winds. And All right, so we are going to go ahead and we're going to slow down on our hike and we're going to stop in an area. Uh, but I do want to quickly point out just how deep and intricate the roots are to these sycamore trees. So I'm going to walk down and you can see them on the other side as well. And they're just clinging to the banks and that really is helping us out because this creek floods a lot. So it really cuts down on the amount of erosion we have. Uh, but we are going to walk down here next to the creek and you can see that this water in the creek, you can see it's barely moving. Okay, so it is moving, but it's moving pretty slow. So if you remember, um, when we learned about the earth processes, when water slows down, what happens to everything that it's carrying? Right, so it drops everything that it's carrying. So this water has slowed down so much that it has actually dropped an entire island's worth of rocks, shells, sand, dirt and logs in one area. So we call this area a gravel bar. And what we're gonna do when we're down here is we're gonna kind of look at what sort of sediments have been dropped here. And we're actually gonna do a small scavenger hunt. All right, so the scavenger hunt we're gonna do is we're gonna look for fossils. So first we need to go over what's the difference between a rock and a fossil. So this here, is a regular old rock, right? It's got a smooth surface and you can't, you know, really see any patterns or anything in it other than it looks like a rock. But a fossil is something that is a rock, but you can see a pattern in it. So this here is a fossil that looks like a clamshell, okay? So this is called a brachiopod fossil and fossils are from animals that they weren't alive yesterday, they weren't alive 100 years ago, they were alive 450 million years ago. So fossils are from animals that were alive millions of years ago. So this animal called a brachiopod was a clam that was alive and it was actually about 200 million years older than dinosaurs. So I'm just gonna, I found a place to sit on the ground and I'm gonna look around me for different types of fossils. So I'm gonna put this one back. And to look for fossils, I'm really just looking for patterns. So you can see here, I see this pattern again. You've got another brachiopod fossil. And you might find in some rocks that you can see like pieces of fossils or pieces of shells. It's another brachiopod fossil. But it might not be the full thing. Um, so think about it now. Do all When animals die, do they all die in one piece? No, sometimes they get broken up into smaller pieces. So just the same with these animals. So, you know, I'm looking at this rock and I can see a piece of a shell, so a piece of a brachiopod, but it's not the whole brachiopod. That's just a regular rock because I don't see any, there's some water on it, but I don't see any patterns. So here's a cool rock. It's got a couple of things in it. So there's something there. Thinking a crinoid, which is the stem of a plant. But if I flip it over, it's also got a piece of a brachiopod. I see this small thing. It's got a really tiny... I just think that's another piece of a brachiopod. Um, ooh, this one's cool. 
So this one is a rock, and it's got that fossil there. Let's look on the other side. And it's got another couple of pieces, and it's got, also got some of these circles. So first we'll talk about these. This one is called a bryozoan, and it was a type of plant. And again, this is like just like the stem of a plant, right? So if you think of a plant, you have the main stem, and you got little stems coming off of it. That's what this one was, except it lived underwater. So it lived in a marine environment, so uh, salt water. And then on the other side, so we got more of those little stems, uh, but we also have these little things. So I call them like little Cheerios. Um, that's also from a plant, but it's like small pieces of a plant. So this is from a crinoid, also a plant. Um, and it was segmented, kind of, you know, you think like a centipede or a millipede has different segments. Well, this plant had different segments, and so each one of these circles or little Cheerios are segments of that plant. Um, let's see, this one up here. So this one has a lot of texture but I don't really see any fossils in it. So some rocks just have a lot of texture um, and don't have fossils. Uh, ooh, this one's really cool. Check this one out. So that's kind of the pattern in the bottom. You can see most rocks aren't shaped this way. So this is um, a horn coral. So it may look like a tooth, um, but it's actually a plant or kind of plant animal sort of thing and it would sit in the ground like this so the point would be in the ground and it would actually have tentacles coming up out of the top here and it would use those tentacles to um, catch its food. I see something cool over here. I'm going to go look for it. So next to my backpack. So this is a type of fossil. Um, I find them a lot so it's almost like a perfect circle. It's got some water on top. But then on the bottom, it's got kind of like a hole or that sort of thing. Um, we still don't really know what these are. I call it an echinoderm. So their modern relative would be kind of like a starfish or something like that. Obviously it doesn't look like one, uh, but it's the 450 million year old version of a starfish. All right, let's see if we can find anything else. So I see some fossils in this rock. Sometimes you can see fossils, but like, I know it's a fossil, but I can't really tell what it is because it's so old. There's a piece of a brachiopod there. This one here is like a jumble. So I see lots of just pieces of brachiopods. Just a whole bunch of different pieces. So I'm thinking like, if you look around me here, you see lots of shells and those shells are broken probably similar 450 million years ago when this one was made. Just a whole bunch of broken shells that got smushed together. Here's another one. All right, I also think it's important to talk about how these fossils were made. Um, so again, if you think about how animals die today, um, they will just sit on the ground right so they're dead they're not going to move they're just sitting on the ground and since these were underwater they actually uh, were actively getting buried by mud and sand mostly sand and when you get buried by all these things the body parts will start to dissolve away and they leave a hole where that animal was and it still has the exact same shape so it still had all of the ridges and sediments will just fill in that hole and create a fossil. So it's called mineralization. I did find something cool over here I want to point out. This is really awesome. So this is, um, these aren't very common to find. So this is a rock. It might look like it's not a rock, but it is a rock because it's got kind of a rock color to it. Uh, this is a snail fossil. So even though this is millions of years old, hundreds of millions of years old, um, it still looks very similar to the snails we see today. So they haven't really changed that much over time. So I'm gonna move to one more spot, see if I can find any more cool fossils, um, and then we will finish up our hike. All right, I walked around just a little bit more, uh, saw lots of fossils. I did wanna point this one out. So this is another horn coral, and you'll notice it is definitely a different size and a different color and even a different shape as the other horn coral I found. 
still has the same patterns still looks kind of like a tooth but it's still a plant um but just like humans just like animals um not every single fossil looks the exact same they're all going to be a little bit different this horn coral is different than the other horn coral um but you always want to look for patterns in rocks that might suggest um, it was an animal of some kind or a plant of some kind so um I'm gonna go ahead and end our scavenger hunt, but I do wanna say that whenever we are looking for fossils, the important thing to do is when we're done, we leave it where it is. All right, so that's gonna end our hike for today on the Sycamore Trail, but I wanna leave you all with a challenge. So our four earth materials that we talked about are soil, rock, air, and water. And the three earth processes that we went over and we looked at out here in nature are weathering, erosion, and deposition. So my challenge to you all is that you all have to craft a story. So it's going to be a paragraph or a couple of paragraphs where you talk about all of the earth materials and all of the earth processes in a fun way. So make up a fun story and use all of those vocabulary words. Thank you for joining me on my hike today, guys. I hope you had fun and good luck on your stories. Bye.